Good evening and thank you very much for staying with us right here on A12 Live, Banama Radio 24. At the lounge this evening, we speak to Hoibin. Do you know who Hoibin is? Well, we're going to find out more about Hoibin uh, right here on A12 Live, Banama Radio 24, the lounge, that is. Uh, well, uh, if you're writing a blog and uh, if you're thinking of starting your own blog, what do you do? Where do you go? You know, uh, we'd like we like to get insights from those who have successful blogs. And uh, this blog is called Six Seal. Who am I talking about? Hoibin once again. Hoibin, a very good evening to you and welcome to the show. Good evening, dear. Well, you know, I have many guests on the show but your name by far is the easiest to pronounce for some reason sorry uh, your name is the, the easiest ah, to pronounce okay. and, and I think uh, I like to say it a lot of times because it's so effortless when I say a name well uh, what's it like uh, being in the uh, blog world for such a long time yeah uh, you don't have to use the headphones you can just yeah so what, what, what's it like being in the uh, blog world for a long time or the well, blogging world for a long time okay well I think it's um, I, I start, I've started blogging since April 2002 mm-hmm. studying in Melbourne at the time so it was just a way of for me to like um, update all my friends about what I'm doing right and then it turned out that um, the entire campus is reading it mm-hmm. and then more and more people are reading it right so the, f- so the first time I really realized that um, the about the well, about what my blog can do was mm-hmm. during an expo in Melbourne. So an expo in Melbourne. So you studied in Melbourne. Yes. Yeah, you had your early uh, your tertiary education in Melbourne. Yep. Um, I actually went to New Zealand when I was fifteen. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the first time. Right. Christchurch, and I didn't finish high school. Um, mm-hmm. I was there for a year. Right. And then uh, due to a lot of reasons, mm-hmm. but yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically, after that. I went to college in Melbourne. Right. So, so after college, from Christchurch, you left uh, left uh, for, uh, left New Zealand and went to Australia. You ended up studying in uh, and finishing your tertiary education in Australia. In Australia, yes. Right. And uh, how how many years was that? Uh, it was four years. Right. And, and to to be able to get a uh, 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 what readership of within Melbourne, you know, I think that's a great thing because everyone's so busy doing their own thing in Melbourne. A lot of people have got big dreams in a in a country like that. Uh, you know, to to get someone to listen to you or to read you all the time uh, is an amazing thing and how do you go about doing that thank you um, well I think it's the content of the blog um, mm-hmm. part of the old school kind of blogger who thinks that content is king right and I still believe that mm-hmm. um, you can have a lot of photos and all that mm-hmm. but still content is king you need something engaging something right. that interests the person mm-hmm. um, interests the reader it can right. be broad based or it can be a very niche um, subject like for example off the top of my head like automobiles mm-hmm. uh, yeah, or you can just I'm a lifestyle blogger I blog about my travels I blog right. about everything so you're the kind of guy if I, I if I were to go out for lunch or mm-hmm. dinner with you you'd take a photo of what you're eating and write about it that night not necessarily but always when I'm traveling always when you're traveling always yeah right so all in all how many years uh, has it been since you started your blog um I just celebrated my 10th blog anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Fantastic. 10th blog anniversary. It's uh, on the 19th of April. 19th of April. And how many many readers do you have or or visits do you have uh, these days on a monthly or or, or, or daily uh, average? Um, Okay. It uh, it fluctuates, but actually um, it's quite stable when you see it by month. Every day is is different. Mm -hmm. Um, But on average, I'll say 4 to 7 unique visitors per day. 4 to? Seven um, thousand unique visitors per day. Wow, and and that's a lot. And people uh, have people been following you from day one. Some of them have, mm-hmm. and these are the best. Um, they, these are the best people. They, they they really care about you. Right. And they're the first. Um, back then, right. Um, mm-hmm. I had a lot of problems with my blog because of the cost involved. And these are the people who donate their time, their money. Back then, blogging was a very tight knit community. And right. Readers are really. Connecting, connected to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I had, I totally lost all my blog contents. Right. I, I, I didn't have a backup in 2006. Mm-hmm. You I lost all the content. Everything. All mm-hmm. my photos, all my pictures, all my posts, all my um, comments. Mm-hmm. And then this guy, out of the blue, his name is David mm-hmm. from Australia. Right. He keeps everything of my blog. He downloads it and mm-hmm. 
I reviewed my blog from then, so it's ten. Is he a stalker or a big fan? <laughs> I would I would say the letter. <laughs> letter. So, the letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he so, came to Malaysia twice, and I met up with him. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's read ev- everything in your blog, and he's also kept a copy of whatever you've written, and he passed it back to you. Yes, he downloaded it. Um, right. Downloaded every single post, mm-hmm. and I couldn't get the comments back, obviously. Because, right. Uh, it doesn't save that way. Mm-hmm. But that thanks to him, SixSeal.com still exists today. Right. Six Seal. Why do you call it Six Seal? It sounds like something uh, biblical, you know, to me. The yeah. Sixth Seal. It is. Uh, it right. actually comes from the book of Revelation. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it's the last mm-hmm. book of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, it is one of the three judgments of God. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, so that, that, that's how you got the name. And what inspired you to use that as a blog name? I was very intrigued um, with the book of Revelation. Right. I was raised in a very Protestant family. Mm-hmm. Um, but personally, um, I'm still trying to find my way. You, you're still trying? Right, right. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I think it's a very nice name. The journey uh, continues, but the sixth seal appeals to you. Yes. Right, uh, so you use the... So is it the sixth uh, six or the sixth seal? It is... S I X T H. Yeah, so it's the sixth seal. Yep. Right. Uh, so let, let's let's get it because I was thinking uh, if it's the sixth seal, it can't be biblical. It has to be the sixth seal. Yeah. Because I read a little bit of the uh, revelations, I find it very amusing. Well, uh, having said that, when you when you use that name, you know, when you came up with the blog, uh, the sixth seal, you know, what was your first one of the first few topics you wrote about? Okay. The first one mm-hmm. was appropri- appropriately named. Let there be light. Because Let there be a light. Yeah. Wow. Like very, very insightful. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Bit, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in Let There Be Light, what did you talk about? Um, I just bought this um, purple lamp from mm-hmm. Coles in Australia. Right. And what, what, what the aim of my blog when I started it? Coles you bought on sale at that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 10 dying or something, yeah. <laughs> and the purpose of my blog, um, mm-hmm. I wanted to be the first one. To have to update daily mm-hmm. and to have photos on my blog. Right. And back in two oh two, digi camps are prohibitively expensive. Right. It is, it is and um, in terms of bandwidth usage right. and, and hostings, mm-hmm. it's very way behind. There's right. no word word press back then. Mm-hmm. My first blog in its um, first iteration right. was strictly coded by myself. Was sic- strictly coded by yourself. You know, yeah, I, I, I have to apologize here that I'm not much of a tech savvy kind of person. So uh-huh. when, when you say it was uh, coded by yourself, what, 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 do, what do you mean for those of us who are not tech savvy? Okay, I graduated in computer science, mm-hmm. um, so I do know a bit of programming. Mm-hmm. So it's basically um, my, my SQL. There's a, it's an SQL as a database. Right. So I wrote um, code to actually pull stuff from from it mm-hmm. and soon after that I realized that there's an easier way right. movable type came out mm-hmm. so I used movable type instead mm-hmm. and that as, uh, that made blogging a lot faster and that made blogging a lot faster yeah, because so, you can code yourself every day so the thing is when people start a blog or when they uh, what you attempt to write a book you know they must have a theme of some sort and your th- your theme was anything and everything that you you come across the life of Hoibin and what I see every day through the eyes of Hoibin so to speak yep, so right so you say you started writing about and you used uh, uh, let there be light as a metaphor for you buying a, a new light from Coles in Melbourne and and uh, what what uh, no how did you get hits on your blog? Okay, um, I think the first one was because of the um, expo that I went to. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to the expo and I was taking a lot of photos. Right. And yeah, I posted about it. Mm-hmm. It was about six months after I started my blog. Right. And I was surprised because um, in Melbourne, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they accept uh, bloggers. They've already... As- there wasn't much of a blogging scene. Right. But someone found my blog mm-hmm. from, from the exhibition and they gave me a media pass so I could get in front and then take photos right yeah because I, I mentioned that in my blog mm-hmm. so they also asked for my permission to have a copy of my blog post right and put it on the official website mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that that was one of your first few uh, important adventures as a blogger yes that was when I knew that um, yeah there's as a blogger there's uh, some some um, organizers mm-hmm. uh, would really want you to cover the events. Right. That's my first experience with that. Right. So, as a blogger, mm-hmm. I know, uh, is this a part time thing for you or is this something you do full time now? Nowadays, I'll say it's practically full time. Practically full time. You yes, don't, I, I you do don't believe like in a day job anymore. It's I just, this is your day job and <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I do have a day job, but it's not something. Uh, it's, I, it's not something you like to talk about. Yeah. 
Oh, right. Okay. Uh, it must be something very interesting then. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come back just after a short break and find out more about Hoibin and uh, the sixth seal, which happens to be his blog. If you haven't uh, read it, uh, just uh, how, how do I get to six seal? Just uh, you just type in s i x t h s e a l dot com. Six seal dot com. It's that simple. Just go to six seal dot com and you'll find out all about this man. We're going to come back after the top five news and find out more about Hoi Bin and uh, him being a blogger and also his uh, blog and uh, uh, what he's going to do in uh, years to come you know what does he want does he want to end up writing a book or does he want to end up having a company which uh, uh, which deals with bloggers you know we don't know we'll find out uh, right after this right here on A12 Live Badama Radio 24 Many of us don't realize that nature provides us with very important services. From the air we breathe to the water we drink, it is important that we take steps to protect and preserve our ecological system. Let's value nature and help preserve it. I am Shah Redza, Executive Director of the Malaysian Nature Society, and this is 812 Life. Welcome back to The Lounge right here on A12 Live, uh, Banama Radio 24. We're currently speaking to a blogger. His name is Hoi Bin. His blog is called the Sixth TheSixthSeal.com. Uh, you may want to check it out and find out more about The Sixth Seal. Well, Hoi Bin, thank you very much for uh, joining us. And uh, I, we do understand that uh, certain dignitaries uh, within Malaysia have uh, commented on your blog, so to speak, or said something on your blog. Uh, you know, uh, what did they talk about and who spoke about uh, whatever you wrote about? Um, well, one of the first, one of the most positive experiences that I've ever had from my blog mm-hmm. is from this post that I wrote about HIV awareness. I didn't know there was an award for it, right. but someone submitted my name, mm-hmm. and I won um, for non-traditional media right. blogs. I won mm-hmm. the main award. Mm-hmm. Um, that was in 2004. And to the best of my knowledge, that was the first time that um, blogs was recognized by an institution as... A valid medium of uh, disseminating information. A valid medium of disseminating information. For disseminating right, information. Right, right. Yeah. And and uh, who who wrote these comments? Um, no, I, I mean I, it was it was an award that won. Right. Uh, I, I do understand that Datin uh, Datin Paduka Marina Mahate did say something about your blog. Yeah, there were yeah it was yeah. Uh, there was doing the dinner. Right. Um, there, there was they flew me down mm-hmm. to KL. I was based in Kuching at that time. Mm-hmm. So someone informed me that I have won an award and they'll fly me down. Um, they'll put me up in Mandarin Oriental, right. where the gala dinner was. Living the life, huh? No, it's a charity dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So it's like yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, the food was really good. The food was really good, awesome, and uh, and of yeah. course you wrote about the food. Well, you know, being a blogger, there are a lot of things uh, that a blogger sees that the rest of us don't see. You know, you you you're very sensitive to what's happening around you because you need uh, to write about something. You need to, like you said, disseminate information. Uh, that's one of your goals. And when you talk about disseminating information and uh, knowing full well that you have a good readership, you know, uh, how do you ascertain what information goes on your blog? You know, a lot of bloggers can. Uh, and rent, you know, some of them can get to a point where it becomes really annoying, mm-hmm. yeah. And, yep. and uh, so, what what is your motto, so to speak, when it comes to writing? Okay, I don't have one per se. Mm-hmm. Um, I basically write about everything, and there's a lot of, I would say, some might think of it as controversial content on my blog. Right. Let's Maybe? talk about the controversy. Mm-hmm. I I I'd love to. Uh, okay. l- let's just find out. And uh, everyone else can read about it. Okay. All right. Um, Notice how, how I start to quiver when I just talk to say controversy. <laughs> I, start, I start to lose my train of talk. Yeah. Okay. This will start being hesitant. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, uh, I used I used to be a, um a drug user. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I went to rehab in two o o six. Right. And now I'm completely clean. Yeah. But previously there was yeah. Uh, 
some content which is mm-hmm. pertaining to substance use. Right. And some people you used to encourage substance use back I, then. I didn't. Um, I was um, with the harm reduction movement, which is to prevent. Mm-hmm. Okay, people are going to try it anyway. Right. So why don't you teach them to do it properly if they are going to try it anyway? Mm-hmm. Like how to inject safely. Right. How to go to. Um, like don't we use the same needle even if it's for yourself right. because yeah it gets blood. most the NGOs are talking about that now so how can that be controversial uh, back in the days uh, back in the day it was yeah mm-hmm. the, the Malaysian methadone program and mm-hmm. uh, strange exchange program right the, it wasn't available back then it wasn't available now it is so it is. hence you can talk about it and yeah. it's great that you come out and tell us that you were a drug user and you're no more drug user. and it's uh, you know for, for those of us who haven't used drugs before we don't know how hard it is to get away from it. No, what was the life like, if you don't mind my asking? Um, well, it's a roller coaster, right? Um, mm-hmm. It depends on every drug is different. Um, depends on what you're using. I was using meth, and I, I basically I'm the kind of person who likes to try for myself instead mm-hmm. of reading. And right. ironically, I was permadam when I was in high school. Right. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. Pamadam is the national anti-drug. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, we, we know uh, that Pamadam uh, is very much against uh, yeah. the, the usage of drugs and they, they are all out to fight, eradicate uh, the uh, what drug use within uh, the peninsula and also in Sabah and Sarawak. Exactly, and, and, mm. and then after I did that in high school, mm-hmm. I read a lot of material which was inconsistent with what I believe um, what I believe is true. Right. Like there will be pamphlets, propaganda, mm-hmm. pamphlets um, mm-hmm. saying that you will grow breasts if you smoke cannabis, right. you go insane if you take LSD mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I'm the kind of person who wants to try it and see and see it for myself whether it's true so or not so uh, after reading all that you actually tried it uh, uh, after reading these pamphlets which said if you do this this will happen to you and that's bad uh, so you, you had to try to see if it was true yes I right. actually actively researched when I went to New Zealand I went mm-hmm. to New Zealand when I was 15 to right. do high school mm-hmm. so I was like you would have loved the 60s s- back then yeah I know, I know yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Power, power, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's so, what I, so I mean, there's no pushing. Right. A lot of people think that drug users, um, they are, they do it because of peer pressure or anything. Mm-hmm. And it's not like that. Uh, it's not because people. of peer pressure. No, I don't. I don't know anyone who does it because of peer pressure. Mm-hmm. People do it because they're curious, or mostly because they're curious. Right. Like in Amsterdam, mm-hmm. they legalize um, cannabis to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Um, so statistics show that you say it's usage actually spiked when they legalize it right. and then it dropped down mm-hmm. to below pre-legalization levels mm-hmm. so in the long term for soft drugs uh, soft I say it with quotes mm-hmm. like cannabis it is actually beneficial a lot of um, that's why a lot of people a lot of places are dec- decriminalizing or legalizing it right when I was in Melbourne I mean, I mean, I mean me- um, the, the medical fraternity is looking into it as a, an optional uh, painkiller now yeah um, mm-hmm. in some countries like mm-hmm. yeah, California mm-hmm. some states uh, some states yeah, are yeah, really medical. allowing that uh, mm-hmm. especially people who have really bad backs and you know people who are suffering from uh, yeah. slip discs you know, mm-hmm. and they're, they're in pain for the rest of their lives and you know, exactly. downing painkillers is as bad is worse than taking drugs to a certain point but having said that no you took drugs you went through an all-time low I'm sure you went through a a, a down and and how do you get back up and tell yourself look I don't want to do this anymore right um that's the thing Um, I got addicted to meth when back in the days so it was really hard for me and Mm -hmm. I I tried to quit by switching to opiates instead right which is opiates is a group of drugs which includes like heroin, oxycodone, all mm-hmm. this stuff. Mm-hmm. But it didn't work. Right. So I went to rehab. I actually went three times. Mm-hmm. The first time didn't go so well. Right. Second time I kinda ran away. Mm-hmm. This was private rehab. Right. And the third time I went and then I was dedicated to really quitting right. drugs. And Con- firstly, congratulations that you are in your 10th year. Secondly, congratulations that you've done a great thing and you are disseminating information. And on your blog, uh, when you communicate mm. with people or with the younger generation, do you talk to them about things like this? Or do they get in touch with you when, when, when you know, they're down and uh, they're in drugs and they want to get out of it? Have you uh, spoken to boys and girls about this? Yes, I've actually, I actually volunteer um, mm-hmm. for this for, uh, for a forum um, and a website every Tuesdays um, right. so you can get in touch with me um, it is an international one mm-hmm. so people ask you about stuff and you try to discourage them from using it but since they are already dedicated to using it you try to tell them how to do it safely right. like don't inject pills never mm-hmm. inject pills mm-hmm. and then just 
harm reduction is a movement that harm reduction is what we're looking at now. Yes, harm right. reduction, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just go to your local. Um, and, and if people want to uh, uh, wean away from drugs or get away from drugs, so to speak, uh, you know, uh, no, we are also there to help. You, you're there to help. Yes, right. Um, so that, that's part of your community service within the cyber world. Yes, and although we have no medical degrees, mm-hmm. uh, what we have is experience. Right. Versus what. But doctors, um, that's the exact opposite of what doctors have. Mm-hmm. They have, ad, ex, um, they have all the knowledge, but right. they don't know how it feels like to be a mm-hmm. drug user who's be, who's addicted to something. Right. So, for us who has been who has gone through it, mm-hmm. we know what it feels like. So that's why, that's how we can um, advise people who are, who really wants to get out how to, um, how to properly get out. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, now that we've talked about the lows in your life and how you got out of it, let's talk about um, your blog and I don't know the the different things or the weird things that you've you've seen and you've written about. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, one of my the it's not the the most hits I get on YouTube, mm-hmm. but one of my most controversial videos is right. about eating dog in Hanoi. Mm-hmm. Eating uh, dogs in Hanoi. Eating dog in Hanoi. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Um. That's the I've I've eaten dog in Korea in Hanoi. Mm-hmm. Korea is yeah is one of the national right. Uh, it's yeah, like a national breed, dish. Yeah. Eating a Labrador for lunch uh, and a uh, German they, they Shepherd. Have a very special mm-hmm. breed of dogs. That they only eat that breed of dog. Right. Uh, and not everyone does it. Mm-hmm. Same in Vietnam. Vietnam. Um. I don't think. Uh, I think it's strays. Mm-hmm. But there's this place um near Hanoi near right. the Red River mm-hmm. where you can actually eat dog. Right, and a lot of people are very against that. But when you mm-hmm. think about I, it, I, I mean, to be honest, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hide this on air. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very much against that because mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a dog lover. But then again, if I was a chicken lover, mm-hmm. you know, I'd hate people who are eating chickens too. You know, I have to look at uh, the yeah. different sides of the, the story. Yeah. And and it, you know, when, when you went then ate dogs in or ate dog in Hanoi, mm-hmm. uh, what was it like and what was the experience like? I wanted to try it because mm-hmm. um, it is famous in Vietnam for that. Hanoi right. is famous for, for dogs in Red River. Mm-hmm. There's this place in Red River. A lot of people go there mm-hmm. and they are all locals. Right. When I go traveling, I do what the locals do. Mm-hmm. Not what, 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 yeah. Right, you don't do the touristy things. Yeah, you you want to do... Really yeah, that's not traveling, right? That's not traveling. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mm-hmm. talk to the locals, you eat with them. Right. Yeah, so I had this uh, motorbike guy mm-hmm. who brought me to the place right. and I paid him with beer Hanoi and then mm-hmm. we ate dog together. Right. And the video is actually quite graphic. Um, mm-hmm. I put it on my YouTube right. um, you can see them chopping up the dogs you can right. see the dogs muzzles and all that mm-hmm. it's just something I wanted to try right because it doesn't necessarily mean that you are you're, 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 you're going to start a no dog eating dogs. show no no, no, no. that's the only two times I've tried dog mm-hmm. um, Korea mm-hmm. and Hanoi but, but let me just warn you on your way out my producer Sean might stab you so <laughs> be careful <laughs> <laughs> in, in the meantime, coming yeah, back, um, um, and, uh, you've like, been to Hanoi, you've been around the world, you've seen uh, a lot of different things, and you don't do touristy things. So you, you, you would have seen some sad things uh, and some really happy things. And a lot of us take for granted what we have from Malaysia. And once again, let me just uh, stress here that we're not trying to shove morals, morals down people's throat. But you know, then again, for those of us who don't travel, we don't quite know what's out there. And sometimes we take what we have in this country for granted. Uh, you know, what are the things as a blog? as someone who writes about these things and goes overseas and sees a lot of things what are the things that we uh, the small and uh, nitty gritty things that we take for granted in Malaysia well um, that's a very good question it's are a very the good, good question is for and one? we can't keep the airwaves empty for a long time <laughs> yeah. it's a dead air and I may, I may get a memo for that <laughs> okay so and yeah in Malaysia, we have a lot of freedoms mm-hmm. and our passport can actually go a lot of places. A lot of people think we can't because right. of the Israel clause. Right. But actually, we can go to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Um, we just have to go um, via a religious group, right. um, like Christianity or um, mm-hmm. Islam. Mm-hmm. But they, when they have those tours of uh, going to uh, the the uh, religious places within yes. within Israel, or yeah. you can yeah. go yourself mm-hmm. and then cross the Jordan border. Right. Yeah, there will right. be easier way to go about it. Right. And Freedom wise we had we do have quite a lot of freedoms. I mean not compared to United States but to a lot of other countries mm-hmm. we have a lot of freedoms uh, right. like um speech wise. Mm-hmm. Um and speech wise. Yes. And that's interesting. Uh, like some, some countries they're not allowed to speak. Uh no, I mean like no. freedom of speech. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Freedom of speech, yeah. right. I I think there's a couple of laws that's um mm-hmm. yeah. Right. You know, but relatively uh, we have a lot um I'm talking about blogging in, mm-hmm. uh, in social media. Mm-hmm. We can actually talk about lo- a lot of things compared to other countries. Right. And yeah. 
where we can talk about a lot of things as compared to other countries. Uh, and it's good to know. countries, but yeah. yeah. But, but uh, that's countries. good to know because a lot of us here think that uh, no, we, we can't say much. You know, and it's, ama- it's uh, interesting that you come in with a piece of information like this. But and not politics, though. And I mean, not politics, know, yeah. Not you, politics, you can yeah. talk about a- anything, and, 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 and that, that's great, right? Mm. Yeah, and uh, coming back to uh, your travels, uh, you, you're traveling everywhere, you know, you write about things everywhere. Well, wh- what's the next destination you're going to go to, and what, what do you want to write about? Have you, you, do you have a plan as to uh, how you want to go about doing that? Yes, um, my next one will be to Philippines mm-hmm. and then Nepal, and I'm doing the Trans Mongolian and Trans or Trans Siberian, depending on the season. Right. This year. Mm-hmm. So um, you don't have like an Aunt Agni section within your blog where you talk about broken hearts and how your heart was broken. I do. You do. Actually, oh, I, had, geez, I was in this man. relationship. Um, okay. Um, I didn't used to be a very nice guy in terms of relationships. Right, uh, I used right. to be a bit of a, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, but I, that all changed um, last year. Mm-hmm. I was trying to be a better person, which right. I'm still trying to be right now. Better you man. Uh, that's uh, what you're trying to be. Yeah, yeah, you improve every single day. Mm-hmm. You just mm-hmm. try to be a better... Okay, I'm, I'm trying to get back to Christianity, so I'm, I'm trying to be a better Christian because my parents are. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, But back to that, yeah. So there was... Uh, sorry, what's the question again? The, uh, the question was, you know, what, what, what have you got planned out for your next destination? What are you going to write, ab- uh, uh, write about? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I digress a bit. Yeah, yeah. the Trans-Siberian. Mm-hmm. It's um, one of the few places which we can actually experience it. Like, just go to the class. Mm-hmm. That's how I travel. Um, just... No, there's a lot of compartments. Welcome right. to my life, man. Traveling third class all my life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, third class travel. That's, mm-hmm. the, that's the only way to go mm-hmm. on the Trans Mongolian or Trans Siberian. Right. Just go and do as I do. There will be no toilets, there will be no um, mushroom facilities. Mm-hmm. So, you bring wet tissues and all that. Right. Yeah. That's how you. Oh, that's, that's how, how you, you clean yourself, yeah. 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 So you use. You have uh, a bunk, um, mm-hmm. a hard mm-hmm. bunk, mm-hmm. and yeah, it costs about one to two thousand. So you're going to do the Trans Siberian. Uh, what about uh, music? Do you write about music? Uh, not, not really. Right. So, so you're not much of a music uh, fan. I am. I love Doa FX. I mm-hmm. love. Um, there's there's a lot of bands I really like, but it's all nineties, like. Um, OC punk bands. Mm-hmm. No FX is my favorite. Um, mm-hmm. Rancid, mm-hmm. Um, Green Day, all, all those. Oh, yeah. you, you, not nowadays. Yeah, yeah not not not, not the, the scene nowadays. Yeah, right. So so you you cover most everything in your blog. Well, yeah. if you just join us on the show, we're currently speaking to oh, Hoi Bin. Relationships. Relationships. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> no, I thought I you didn't want to talk about it, so you know, yeah, I slyly yeah, I digressed <laughs> for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. Um, Back to that, yeah, I was in a relationship earlier this year, mm-hmm. around Chinese New Year. Right. And I got my heart really broken and I was writing about it on my blog. Because mm-hmm. I write about everything that right. happens in my life. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I think that's why people read me to see what's going on. Right. And it was a really tough experience because it's uh, only... S- I I I've, I've only been dumb like twice. I don't mean to sound like no no no, 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 no you're not you're not no no okay, yeah, but this I'm only dumb by you yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've only I've only been dumb twice in mm-hmm. my life this mm-hmm. is the second time this is the second time yeah. and the pain is just as as acute as the first one yeah because I was really mm-hmm. in love I thought she was the one right and then it um it turned out that uh, how did you think that she was the one no what made you think that she was the one. Um, there's a lot of things chemistry mm-hmm. um, how we can relate to each other right. how we can feel comfortable with each other even though it's just like we're, do- we're just doing nothing mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. all of that right. and it's, the, it's a feeling that um, cannot be quantified right. so I, I, I've gotten over her Mm-hmm. So, but but yeah, it was quite but, a tough but, but about, 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 about fifteen thousand people got to know about it. <laughs> right, but but, no. but when you write about these things, do people give you feedback and comments as yes. to what you should do? Yes, they do. Mm. And I, I I will listen to every I will listen and reply to every single comment. Right. Um, Any good I've, comments? I, um, good and bad. Good and bad. Yeah. Okay. What was it's the worst comment you got about love? Um, okay. Move on. <laughs> Get um, on with uh, life. I, I, yeah. I don't think I can say it mm. on radio. So right. well, yeah. oh, better not. Better yeah, not. Yeah. No. So I need to keep my job yeah, for the but, next but few years is, at least. Yeah, but it is a very eye-opening thing that mm-hmm. um, basically uh, the sanitized version is that I was being whiny and clingy and then loving someone who doesn't uh, even care about me anymore. Right. So right. yeah. So. That really woke me up, and mm-hmm. then yeah, I was mm-hmm. talking to my friends about it, including my ex-girlfriend. Not this one. The right. You uh, even speak to your ex-girlfriend about it. Yeah, I, I'm very close to most of my ex-girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was talking to her about it, and then yeah, she was saying yeah, you're really coming across as this whiny guy. Uh, right. Yeah. 
Right. And then just stop it. Okay, there's two other things I want to talk about. No, we've got a few minutes left on the show, about four minutes left. The oh. first thing is, uh, when it comes to writing a blog, you know, if someone wants to start writing a blog, okay. what would be the advice or tips you give in order to be a good blogger? Okay, um, write about something you're passionate about. Right. Um, it doesn't. It can be very niche. Don't worry about it. People read. If you're passionate about it, you have the motivation to blog. Mm -hmm. Don't do it for the money. A lot of people do it for the money nowadays. Right. And that is the wrong way to go about it because that's not where your passion is. Mm -hmm. If you write with passion, people will read. People will know mm -hmm. that you're writing from the heart. Right. So that's what you should do. If you want to blog, blog about something that interests you. Mm -hmm. Don't force yourself into something you are not. Right. Be who you are, and, and then and be and transparent about everything. And when it comes to style of writing, I, I've, I, I'm not much of a tech savvy guy, and I don't uh, get on the net as often as I should be getting onto the net. And having said that, I've read a couple of blogs, and I think the English in certain blogs or, or the way they write, it's atrocious, or maybe that's a style of writing. I, I don't know. Um, no, I, 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 I know what you mean. Um, some people write like that. Right. It, it can appeal to the younger generation. I mean, like. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people just put their photos, right. um, but you have to be aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing to do that. Aesthetically ple pleasing, yeah. that, that's <laughs> one, one, one of the uh, most important things for the younger generation. Yeah, um, aesthetically and no pleasing. Text. I noticed that a lot of um, mm -hmm. uh, the too long didn't read generation, mm -hmm. they don't like to read a lot of text. Right. But don't worry, if you, if you like to write, write. Mm -hmm. um, if you like to write long posts, just do it. Just um, do because it. you will still have readers the readers who love to read instead of just looking at pictures right, the but of course mm -hmm. you have to put in pictures yeah the most important thing is to uh, be passionate about what you do yes right that's uh, that's very important yeah. well uh, coming to the uh, final thing uh, for the evening you know, it's really exhilarating talking to you and, and finding out about your life because there's just so much to uh, dig in where, where you're concerned well uh, it, there's a Naf Nang uh, event so, coming up it's called yep. Blogopolis can you tell us a little bit about Blogopolis Okay, Nafdam Blogopolis will be happening on the 14th mm -hmm. of July. Mm -hmm. So, there'll be a lot of veteran bloggers speaking on it. Right. So, um, there's not only bloggers, mm -hmm. there's also people from other industries, uh, industry heads. Right. So, it'll be very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, I'll be speaking about um, tips, on, tips on blogging and stuff like that. Right. I've been blogging for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, this... Um, how do you survive this long in this environment? I'll be touching on some other stuff as... Uh, Block wise as well, right? And there'll be industry people there. Right. So. so it's happening on the 14th of July, uh, 2012, at the, the Concord Hotel. If you want to find out more about it, uh, you go to nafnang.com. Yes, nafnang.com, and you'll and get the all the information. Police, yeah. Right. The I just want one, one last question for you, Hoi Bin, before we let you go. You're a blogger. Mm -hmm. you, you've you've done tertiary education. You've done secondary education. You've seen your life go down and come up. Mm -hmm. And today in the news, of course, being uh, predominantly a news channel, uh, we uh, try to. Uh, pick up on something on the news and uh, in the news today they're saying they're going to tweak the form six uh, uh, the sixth form to be uh, something a little different your thoughts on it before we end well I don't really agree ab um, with what, what they're saying mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. personally um, I think we don't get a lot of chances right uh, so that's why we go overseas to study mm -hmm. and I, I still believe in going overseas to study you get to experience different cultures different experiences and you come back a different mm -hmm. person right you come back a different person and you bring all the experience and the, the, good the, 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 the culturalism back to Malaysia and yeah. you try to apply the good here uh, and you open your mind to a lot of stuff you are, you are more open minded in a sense mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which you can't get if you stay in your comfort zone in Malaysia right so I'm still a very strong advocate towards studying overseas you're still a strong advocate towards studying overseas well yeah. it was a Pleasure having you here. If you want to find out about Paul Webin, all you need to do is uh, lo log on to his blog, which is uh, www.sixthseal.com. Sixth Seal, as in the uh, Book of Revelation, sixthseal.com, and you'll get all the information about this lifestyle blog. It was uh, an honor and a pleasure having you here, my friend. Same, same to me, yeah, Okay, take it Adjure. easy. Yeah, we'll hope to have you back in the studios uh, sometime very soon uh, to talk about your travels to uh, doing the whole Trans Siberian thing. Yeah, no, that'll be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for to it just thank came in from Germany yep yep thanks Gerard thank you and very much thanks to all my well uh, out there uh -huh. both of us are talking now and uh, we're getting lost coming up shortly <laughs> is a uh, news 24 extra right here on a 12 live Banama radio 24 stay with us